A BBC article published in April of 2020 continues to make waves with people. The headline itself is controversial. Africans in China, we face coronavirus discrimination. Nigerian businessman Maximus Ogbana, who is quoted in the article and currently lives in Guangzhou, posted on Twitter as recently as June 2021 that he'd seen the article and that his statements were in fact distorted. Hi, I'm Maximus Ogbana the leader of Nigerian community in Guangzhou, China. Here, I strongly condemn BBC News Hong Kong and its reporter, Danny Vincent. There's the guy here, I show you his photo here, okay? In April 2020, Danny Vincent, the, v the BBC News Hong Kong reporter, contacted me on phone and other media platform to get the information on the happenings during the lockdown in Guangzhou, China. During the interview, I obviously felt that Danny Vincent had tenacious view and just focused on the negative side of the situation. Okay, I'm gonna show you again, look here. Okay, you can see where he asked me how the situation is getting and I told him things are getting better. And he did not care about the effort the Chinese government did for the Nigerian community during the lockdown. And no comments for the positive outcome. What's the most shocking is that I never used the word discrimination when I was talking with him. Okay, I never used that, okay? But the title, African in China, we face coronavirus discrimination. Look at the title of his publication now, okay? Look, look at it now. Can you see? Can you see? The BBC article stated that Vincent interviewed four African students, one African community leader, one Ivorian businessman, and one Nigerian businessman. These interviewees remained nameless in the article. Other side of this story, Africans living in Guangzhou who are willing to provide their real names and identities have related their own experiences living in China and have directly opposed this BBC published piece. I've been in Guangzhou about four years now. The school was so it was so safe there. They used to take care of us and everything. According to my personal experience, no discrimination because I've never heard about that. Uh, my name is Jerry and I come from Uganda. I came to do business in Guangzhou. Uh, there was nothing like, you know, any troubles, any issues when I was being quarantined. Uh, where I live, uh, nobody discriminates me and I'm very grateful for that. I will not say this represents the whole situation that we go through as a community of Africans and black people in China. It does not. Uh, my right. name is Jamzi. Uh, I have been in the country three years. I work for shipping. Yeah, I see the, I see the support from the government because the government, they sent to me the foods. Uh, they sent to me like the water, everything for the living in the house. Uh, I don't have any experience uh, of being discriminated after coming to Guangzhou, uh, but I heard the news uh, some Africans were being discriminated because they don't follow the rules, uh, but they are not all majority. The majority of Africans is fine and good because they follow the rules. Yeah, my name is Prever. Uh I'm 18 years old. I'm born here. I'm a school here. So I'm living here with my family. The government is, is giving us, it provides us the food for eating and for everything. And it's taking, taking, and it's taking care of us. That is, that is, uh, that, that's good. Yeah, I re I'm gonna take the vaccination and it's free. The report for African, for African people in China discrim discriminating is not true. Yeah, I have been in Guangzhou when the, the, the epidemic began. I was living in school. I didn't see any trouble because I was safe. I bought support 
my school, he give me the food, he do the, the tests free. I have been vaccinated, it's free of charge. Yes, I heard in social media, but in social media, I have many, many information, many information. I don't know if it's true or not, because I didn't experience that. If BBC reporter Danny Vincent did conduct those interviews in Guangzhou, surely he would have come across the above-mentioned people's views. Yet his article contains none of these particular viewpoints and instead reaches a negative conclusion without factual basis. That is, this is not in line with the tenets of objectivity and neutrality sacred in mainstream media. Historically, various sources of mainstream media have made glaring errors, and this is not the first time for the BBC. As far back as May 2003, most of us can recall a BBC program quoting the British Ministry of Defence expert Dr. Kelly as saying that the Blair government had deliberately exaggerated in intelligence reports that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction in order to start a war. After the report was broadcast, British public reactions became highly charged. Dr. Kelly was found to have died by suicide shortly after his name was made public in the media. Blair faced a political crisis. An independent judicial investigation revealed that the BBC's report had been inaccurate. Subsequently, the then chairman of the board of directors and the president of the BBC resigned. On the evening of March 18th, 2017, the BBC made another error, having broadcast a documentary about Australian Aboriginals suffering from alcohol abuse. The BBC mistakenly stated that Aboriginal people were drinking heavily at a party, when in fact the incident had happened during an overnight vigil for a friend who had died. Subsequently, the BBC aired an apology. And as recently as May 20th, 2021, the BBC admitted that its reporter, Martin Bashir, had tricked Princess Diana into that exclusive interview in 1995. For this, the BBC apologized to Prince William, Prince Harry, and other members of the royal family. The British conservative tabloid newspaper, The Daily Express, reported that public opinion surveys showed that nearly half of British respondents believed that BBC news reports in recent years lacked fairness. Over the last 12 months, the BBC has received nearly 500,000 viewer complaints about perceived bias. And according to the broadcaster's own annual report released in early July of 2021, they received 462,255 complaints from 2020 to 2021. That's an increase of 93,878 from the previous year. To quote a July 11th article in The Nation, Broadcasting watchdog Ofcom stated that it's unusual for a single broadcaster to receive so many complaints. And my feelings and conscience get hurt when I see when I saw this, okay? I think I should stand out and speak out the truth and deplore and condemn BBC's mistake. And I reserve the right, it's my right to take further legal actions and steps. The BBC has apologized to various parties for its reporting several times before, including an apology to the British princes. Clearly, the BBC article, Africans in China, We Face Coronavirus Discrimination, is an article led by a few opinions and no researched facts. The question is, after seeing alternative viewpoints verified by these Africans, will the BBC correct the misinformation published in their article?